Can you sit? Show the good people. Oh, good boy. Good job. Hello, friends. Seymour's showing off for you. You're lucky. Good boy. Today's class, we're going to do just a little bit of routine maintenance. So not really any specific area of focus, just like a good weekly practice to incorporate and something I think I'm going to try to start doing maybe like one weekly class going forward as a maintenance class and then do the other one as more of like an area of like focusing on one specific thing, one lift or one part of the body or a request that someone might have, for example. So let's do some maintenance. Um, for this one, like I said, we're going to try and just touch on a little bit of everything that typically would bother us from lifting maybe tighter areas, stuff like that. And I want to start with our wrists. So let me pull my little sleeves up here. Um, we're going to do some wrist cars. And a lot of people are familiar with like the shoulder cars. And um, this is a similar concept. So we're going to take the hand, take the forearm, right hand grabs the left forearm. And that's mostly just to keep it from moving. So as part of the car's mobility, you want to try and hit like the different ranges of motion. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that can change if you let your arm move with your wrist. You're going to get uh, further um, end ranges that aren't really accurate. So we want to hold that forearm with the right hand, keeping it mostly stable so that we're able to really accurately hit those ranges of motion. So that being said, um, I like to start with fingers pointing fairly down. So for the whole thing, our palm's going to be facing sort of up or towards us. So fingers pointing down and then fingers move over to the right and slowly come up so that the palm is facing you. And then over to the left, not a ton of range of motion there. And then fingers move down. And same rotation again. Over to the right. Palm facing you. And over to the left. One more. Fingers down. Over to the right. Up to the ceiling and over to the left. That's a pretty intense little mobility drill. So only a few of those are necessary. And then we'll switch sides. So right forearm in the left hand. And I, again, I like to start with fingers facing down. And then fingers moving over to the left. Palm facing you. And just a little bit over to the right. Nice and slow and controlled. That's the C in cars. Over to the left. Fingers up to the ceiling. Over to the right. I have to like fight my arm from moving. It really wants to go. It's like, hey, I can get a lot more out of this if you just let me free. Over to the left, fingers up, palm facing you, and over to the right. And release that one. So that's a good little way to start with the wrists. And then both wrists out to the sides, fingertips on the floor, so the hands are tented. And we're just going to do a couple of little neck rolls here. So chin through the center, right ear to the right, and reverse it. 
chin through the center, left ear to the left. I like to close my eyes for these, you don't have to. Last one. And while we're seated, we're just going to go ahead and take one of our shoulder stretches. So we're going to take the left arm. The right arm bends under the left elbow. And if you're able to wrap that right hand, right fingers onto the left palm, that can really get a good deep shoulder shoulder blade stretch if you cannot reach that that's okay just try and grab onto something with those right fingertips somewhere on the left arm and sit up nice and tall Release and switch. So this time the left arm wraps under the right arm. Left fingertips grab the right palm or somewhere on the right arm. And release. From here, we're going to make our way back into down dog. Hands planted, shoulders width to mat width apart. Feet are about hips width apart. The balls of the feet and the entire hands pushing into the floor. And just walk out those feet. So switch, pushing one heel down and bending the opposite leg. Just a couple times. Side to side. Maybe dipping the hip of the bent leg a little further towards the floor. Exaggerating that stretch. Really letting yourself get some good ankle and calf stretch on the straight leg. And then while we're here, walk your feet in just a touch, maybe six inches. We're going to take the left foot back behind us, tuck the toes so the top of your foot is on the floor, and just bend that right knee. You can come all the way down to the floor with it. Stretch the top of that left foot. And switch. Straighten the right leg. Bring the left foot in. Take the right foot back, bend that left knee. And switch. If you don't want to bring that right knee to the floor, totally fine. Just really push through the left toes and the top of that left foot. Switch. Okay, and then back to down dog. So feet walk back again to the original position. And from here, bring that left foot all the way up towards the hands. Drop that right knee down. And come down on the inside of the left foot, either on your hands or on your forearms wherever you have space, and where you can comfortably hang out for a few breaths. We won't be here super long. I know not everyone loves to hang out in deep hip stretches as much as I do, and that's okay. Hey, buddy.
And then if you're on your forearms, push back up onto your hands, bring that left knee back, and we'll just switch from there. So right foot forward and either hanging out on those hands inside the right foot or down onto your forearms. Okay, and then come back up, bring that right foot back into down dog. And we're just going to transition right from here. So right foot steps all the way forward, and we're going to turn sideways. So feet can be as wide as you want them to be here. You want a stable base. Um, so, you know, I would say at least three feet, four feet, five feet, but you don't wanna be down into splits. So from here, we're gonna actually walk our hands over to the left leg first. So if you can grab your left ankle with your right hand, go for it and just hang out here for a few breaths. And then walk them over to the right. So left hand grabs the right ankle. If you aren't able to reach your ankle, you can always walk your feet in closer together. And then let that go. From here, slowly make your way back up. Interlace your hands behind your low back, straightening your arms, and then fold down, letting your arms wrap around. Getting a good deep stretch in the fronts of the shoulders. And then let that go. Hands come down. And walking forward, we're going to turn that right foot to be facing the front. And we're going to walk the left foot in a little bit. So maybe feet are, I don't know, three-ish feet apart. Left toes are pointed out at an angle. Right toes are pointed straight forward. We're going to take that right hand to the right ankle and left arm up to the sky. Legs are strong here. So pushing through the feet, like you're trying to pull the mat apart. And using that strength to keep you um, from dumping into that right hand and putting all your weight no weight at all, really. You could just take your hand right off the leg and your upper body wouldn't move at all. And then bring that left hand to the floor. And we're gonna fingertips on the floor if you can reach it. We're gonna reach the right hand up. And release, walk that right foot back and the left foot forward. So just like the other side, left toes are gonna point straight ahead, right foot, um, right toes are pointed out at an angle 
four, maybe 45 degrees ish. And left hand somewhere gently resting on left ankle or shin, right hand up to the sky. Just like the other side, try to keep yourself from putting all of your body, your upper body weight in that left hand. And then bring that right hand down, left hand up. A little more weight is resting in the hand that's on the floor since we're twisting. And then left hand down. Take that left foot back. And from here, we're going to come into a very quick pigeon pose. So right leg comes forward, bent, right knee down, right foot down. And then if you need to walk your left knee, left toes back. And to whatever degree you can, fold over that right leg. Just a couple breaths here. Again, I know not everyone shares my love of holding pigeon for five minutes. And then switch. So coming back up onto left toes, take that right leg back and bring the left leg forward. And fold over the left leg. Okay, swing on over the left glute, bring that right leg around, bring the left leg around. We'll just go into a gentle fold here. So hands reaching in the direction of the feet, let your upper body relax. And slowly roll back right onto your spine, hug your knees in, and just rock very gently side to side. The last little thing we're going to do is bring the feet down about as wide as your mat and let your knees fall in towards one another. You can let your hands rest at your sides or on your belly. Let your eyes close. We're just going to hang out here for a couple breaths. And that is all we have for today. Our routine maintenance doesn't have to be like a super complicated thing. It can be just a few minutes here and there. So hopefully you find this beneficial. Like I said, I think 
plan is to incorporate these maybe uh, once a week and get more of a habit built around just touching all of these different areas. It doesn't always have to be a hyper-focused practice on one specific thing. That can be really beneficial if you have an area that's really tight or bothering you. But for the most part, I think everyone could benefit from one of these types of practices once or twice a week or whatever time you have to give it. So thanks for showing up and giving it a shot and have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Bye. Where are you going? The people want to see you. You can't leave. No one wants to watch me. They're paying to watch you.